Welcome back. Well, at this point, we'll be unveiling who, well, like um, my colleague N.T. Nota said, he said, this is the home stretch. Earlier on, I said you'd get to know who the artist of the week is, and at this point, we'll be unveiling that artist for you since you've sat in patiently. Well, the Badon based Mount Zion Faith Ministries is Nigeria's foremost and biggest drama ministry. I'm sure a whole lot of us grew up or we, we knew so much about the, Mount, the dramas from Mount Zion back in the day. And, well, it was founded by none other than evangelist Mike Bamiloui, and he is our artist for the week. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Well, the popular music uh, movie evangelist is achieving this feat with joint effort with his wife, yes, sir. Gloria, yeah. popular face on TV, <laughs> the beautiful woman who um, we all know. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Actually, well, most of us know, those of us who know the Mount Zion drama series. Well, you're okay. going to say? I was going to ask him a question. At a point, I thought, I mean, the Mount Zion movies were... were, were Phased out or dead I mean, or they, we've not had so Nollywood much. would overshadowed them because before <laughs> Nollywood got to where it is now, yeah. Mount Zion Faith Ministries, those movies, your movies were like movies that many Nigerians turned to to get what's going on around. So okay. what happened? No, it wasn't like that. And actually, maybe the time you were talking about was when the Mozambique Faith Ministries were so much on the in television Syria, yeah. like Agbaranla, Ultimate Power. Yeah, Ultimate Power. Um, and then, uh, ever since then, the Mozambique Faith Ministries, uh, the film production uh, has been on. And uh, last year, August, we, we celebrated the 100th movie mm. of Mozambique Faith Ministries. So, so we have been on. But in, 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 in along the line, we was also busy with training church drama ministries, training people from different ministries, and then we were also um, in the, uh, also going out of the country, working with some other churches, building people into into Christian film productions, and so so along the line up till this up till this January, we was we still went out of the country making Christian movies with some older people, building them up. Okay, yeah. you, you started the ministry at the age of 25, you know, yes. a, very, a rather young age, you know. You started a, as an evangelist, and then with almost no money at all, with the support of your wife, obviously, what prompted the transition or the joinder? You know, what then? You know, what would make an evangelist think of going into the drama series? What, what brought about that merger? What brought the marriage between your ministry as an evangelist and the movie industry. And actually, I, <coughs> the, the, the ministry is the drama ministry. I, 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 I was a, um, a member of the drama group of the college when we were in the fellowship. Okay. And I was busy doing that when I was one of the members. And when I graduated, I still went back again. I was coordinating the drama, helping the drama group to coordinate. So right from that moment, I've known it's a ministry. So now that I was a minister somewhere, I did not now enter into drama ministry. I have grown up into the drama ministry. Was it, were you studying theater art? I did not study theater art at all. What did you study? I studied English and then, and Yoruba and then had an education. Okay, more like language, language education, language education. Yes, yes, okay. language education. So why did you, what, what, did, what drew you into drama? I believe that every child of God that the Lord has saved and delivered is created for a purpose. So all along I have known that there is a call of God upon my life to do something for him. And so I discovered it when I was in the college working with the Christian Fellowship Drama Unit. Okay. Uh, when I, well, okay. Drama. Yes. You talked about a call. Yeah. I mean, you could have gone ahead to preach. You could have gone ahead to a sing. To sing, yes. ahead Which to was rather popular. Song. You could have gone ahead to be a financier, but you decided to go into drama, which is acting. Yes, I so believe why, the what call. made you, what drew you to okay. acting? Okay, okay. Now, I, as, as I, when I was growing up, I, in my early years of, um, of, of, of my conversion, when I knew, come to know the Lord, I knew that the Lord had a call of God for my life. So when I was in the college and I was working with the Christian Fellowship and I was a member of the drama group, Christian Fellowship, the drama ministry was very strong on the campus. 
Whenever I want to stage a play, people will gather together. It was very, very powerful drama. When, when, I, when I graduated, I was working with them. I was moving them around, went to NTA, stage drama. So I had known that it's a call of God for my life. So you know you are talking about that uh, I couldn't be a pastor. I couldn't be. I, I believe that with the drama, I did the work of a pastor. I preached the gospel. With the drama, I, people are healed. Though I may not be laying hands, but people are getting healed as they watch the drama. Okay, let me yeah. ask. You know, as a young man back then, okay. with barely enough money, you know, you know, starting, how were you able to finance this drama project, the drama series then, and put them on TV for everybody to see? And you were just starting. How did you get support? How did you? No, what, what happened was that at that time, a, a, a lot of us gathered together. So people came out with passion to serve. So I remember that we were making our first television series, the Agbara and Laon. We just gathered in the village, and people just gathered there together. People wanted to serve God. They desired to serve God, not even to take any money, not even to collect money, not even to be paid. So we gathered together, and, uh, and we, came to, we came out with that television series. But we never knew it was going to be like that. We were just doing our thing. We just wanted to use our gift for God. We never knew it was going to be what it was. And so when it, was, when it came out, some people stood up to sponsor it on television. Well, I'm hoping that we'll be able to see one or two clips on some of your productions. But how do you get to your stories, the stories you produce into this TV series or each produce into movies? How do you get your storylines? Uh, it's, 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 it's the way an anointed pastor preaches the gospel. He prays that the Lord will give him words. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. see this one. <laughs> <laughs> No, my daughter, you're not going to get it. Don't you want to No, but No, go I don't know. Ah, yeah, oh no. Ah, 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 yeah, ah, 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 it was written by our son, Damila Lama, Damila wrote it. I directed it. Okay. okay. And uh, the, 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 the boy that was being beaten by the father uh, messed up with the house help. Okay. That has been living with the family since, since a child. Okay. So the father was disciplining him. Uh, so you, you said it was written by your son, so obviously it, it, it runs in the family. It it's going down the family, family line. Yes, all the members in, the, in our ministry, they, they, we are all involved in the production and the producers, including okay. the children. All right, but many people believe that since your first production, Agbar and La, that's the ultimate power, that got a whole lot of airplay, viewership, and all of that. You've not been able to come up with another production that strong. How true is that? Agbar and La came because the Lord gave us. Uh, sorry, before you go, let's see no. this one here. Okay. Hello, son. How's mom? Fine. I've been calling your numbers for the past 15 minutes. Why didn't you pick my calls? I, I did not see your phone call, but I just look at the caller now. Okay? Where are you? I have lost the description of your new office. And we need to talk urgently. I'm in town. Can you send me the description of your office so that I can input it in my GPS? Ah, that, I'm far away in a business meeting in Korea. I'll talk to you maybe next week. Far away in, in Korea? Why did you tell me you will be away from town when I was talking with you last week? And you did not tell me you were coming to see me, driving all the way from Kingston to Hampton just to see me. And well, when you will not pick the cause. Now, praise God, you pick my